Maggie is a 2015 American post-apocalyptic horror drama film directed by Henry Hobson, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger and Abigail Breslin. Welcome back to the Cult of Films. I'm John, the host, and once again, I'm joined by Zach Taylor. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm back. Back, man. Are you ready to get sad? Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's get sad. <laughs> let's talk about this sad bastard zombie movie. Uh, right? I know you're not a horror fan. You are a self-proclaimed scaredy cat. Am I? Am I... It, yeah, you're, you're totally right there, man. I, I get scared. When I wanted to talk about a horror film, I was just like, I know, I know Zach's position on these on this genre of film, but I feel like this movie was different enough where you might enjoy it. So, Zach, what did you think of Maggie? I I thought it was good. It, it wasn't it wasn't what I expected. <clears throat> I sort of expected a sort of I Am Legend sort of thing. I thought it was going to be. His daughter was going to start out kind of as a zombie and he was going to be like trying to get her somewhere to get some sort of antidote for the, the the virus and whatnot. And I was I was totally, totally wrong. It was um, like I, I knew it was going to be a little bit more of a drama than anything else. Yeah, it, it was something totally different than than what I expected. But it, it was a it was a it was a good movie. It, it, probably not something I would necessarily watch again. Sure, but I definitely uh, enjoyed it when I when I watched it. Yeah, having been so entrenched in the horror genre for so long, and spe- I mean, I, I used to have a, a Walking Dead podcast, so I mean, very familiar with this genre and this subgenre. Dude, okay, listen. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> no, I'm serious. <laughs> I have to say at this point, as far as the, the zombie thing goes, I feel like I've seen it all. And every zombie movie kind of has its own, you know, style. They'll, they'll yeah. add little things like here and there. Right. there there's flair. Oh, uh, you know, we're going to Vegas and doing a heist yeah. movie. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a more polar opposite movie? <laughs> right. This one kind of surprised me a little bit, and it did feel a little fresh. And that was what was refreshing about this movie. Now, with that being said, it was was done by a first-time writer. It was done by a first-time director. Henry Hobson is actually more known for his opening uh, cinematic sequences from, like, The Last of Us and other video games. So this is, like, a video game guy. Yeah, like he did like some trailers for some stuff and like cut some uh, some opening scenes uh, credits for for movies. I, I did see that. Mm-hmm. And overall, the movie feels a little inexperienced. The story feels yeah. great. The story mm-hmm. is what's fresh. The writing isn't always the best, and it, not 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 like the writing's bad. I'm just saying it. it you feel the inexperience a little bit more. Yeah. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It's always nice to have these huge name actors mm-hmm. take a chance on these type of films, and this is what we want right. to see more of, right? Right. Like this was not like your typical Arnold Arnold Schwarzenegger kind of thriller. He's not like son of a bitch. Like going guns in, and you know. It's a much more thoughtful movie mm-hmm. than um, he did, and and I thought he he pulled it off pretty well. I felt like he did a, a great job. Um, this is not Arnold Schwarzenegger role at all. I mean, he I mean, he still has his, his heavy accent because he's just that's him, you know. That's that's the Arnold. <laughs> that's the Arnold from the shooting standpoint. Like the, the cinematography, oh, it, it was great. It's great, but it feels amateurishly flashy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There were there was a lot of like kind of scenes of like scenery, basically. Yeah, like exactly. Trees and clouds yeah. and fields and stuff. 
I mean, there were, there were beautiful shots, but I, I think there was maybe a little too many. But it, it was a, like a 90-minute movie, though, so... Right. Yeah. yeah could, it couldn't shorten it. And the opening sequence, especially when, mm-hmm. you know, we open up and Arnold's kind of driving on the freeway and you get... It, it's a nice setup, right? They do kind of... There, there's like a voice over and it kind of tells you a little bit, you know, there's a little bit of an exposition dump at the beginning and it kind of sets yeah. up the world, which you need. And it's better mm-hmm. than having everything set up from like a, a character talking like i'm glad that they did that like the whole radio exposition yeah thing. Kind not of, like an inner monologue sort of situation ex- exactly i I'd much rather this um which yeah. it, it's been done before but it was done well but then they showed you the world and right. and yes it looked a little photoshoppy where you know <laughs> obviously it was shot on a green oh. screen and oh yeah filters were were applied <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't quite day for night, but it was gray for for afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it seemed like there was always a thunderstorm looming. Yeah. <laughs> but but yeah. there was never actually a thunderstorm. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, all that said, you could you could definitely say it wasn't a lazy film, and and they, no. it was even though it was a little over ambitious and a little overreaching at times. I feel like overall it was. A success for especially for a million and a half for the budget. Oh yeah, I mean it's it's your first time out. You know you definitely are always a little over ambitious when you when you do that and you you try things. And I think you know lessons are learned there. What is Maggie about for anyone that hasn't seen it? Honestly, it's I, I think it's it's a lot about grief and, and coming to terms with grief and you know an imminent loss. me that you'll make it stop I just can't can't do it anymore because this story didn't have to be about a zombie situ- uh, uh, his daughter you know her slow I mean it could be a father watching a, a daughter succumb to cancer or, sure. or something like that and <clears throat> like I said it's, it's really about the grief and the the dealing with that and then you know also you know living in this this world where you know you see your neighbor in the woods and it's like oh no i gotta i gotta deal with that yeah because because they've been they've been turned to zombies it's it's not you know full-on like 28 days later right zombie you know like rage thing but it is more similar to that than i think like Zack snyder's zombie films because you know they're they're not rage zombies but it, it is definitely leans more into these aren't walking dead so to speak these are more infected mm-hmm. <laughs> And what this does that is so effective and makes it more heartbreaking is that, you know, you think of of, of films like The Walking Dead where the virus doesn't kick in until the person actually dies, you know? So it's very quick. And then, you know, like the turn is usually anywhere from from minutes to maybe, uh, you know, an hour or so. Right. This is that turn taking over, what, like a month or or weeks? Yeah, I think they were saying uh, it was... It's it's like a month, and then you know she had been bitten, and I, I got the feeling you know she had been bitten at home or around home, and then left to go to the city to get away from people, and then it said that he had spent two weeks looking for her, mm-hmm. so it, it took a while, and that's that's something very different from from zombie movies because like you said, usually it's like a few minutes to like a couple of hours. You get to take him home and have like a summer with them, and then that yeah. puts everyone in this like, like like you said, cancer is kind of a, a an analog for that because it's just mm-hmm. like you get a diagnosis or something, yeah. and insert any kind of disease, and it's and it's like that. It, it does. It's not it's so much a zombie movie in that aspect. It, it's right. more of dealing with a person that's it, it's a helpless. It's it's a horrible yeah. inevitability. Inevitability. Yeah. That's not a normal zombie inevitability it's not a million right. zombies walking at you it's this disease destroying these people's lives in real time and how how right. do people deal with that I like that it kind of uh put us in the, in the center of things like you know they, they seem to know things about the virus that, mm-hmm. that caused it and like you said there wasn't a lot of exposition of 
usually it's when you see these zombie things, it's like the beginning of days when when the zombie outbreaks first start. But like, you know, they they knew a lot about it and it was kind of part of their their daily routine at this point having to to deal with this stuff you get a quick snippet of of the of the outbreak right at the beginning Mm -hmm. of those type of movies where it's like fast uh cut-ins and insert shots of like news reels or something like oh there's a car crash scene and there's like a body on the floor and then you see it get up and bite someone real fast or something you know you use all those tropes to to set up your post-apocalyptic world where this is just like it it doesn't matter any of that like it's it's not about that at all it's kind of uh an effective storytelling tool and in a in a fun way to flip the genre on its head to make zombies more sympathetic right right and even when like the uh the uh the male friend that she had the the boyfriend or whatever Mm -hmm. you know when he said he's like when when he got bit it's like he could almost see like the regret in yeah and the woman who bit him's eyes Mm -hmm. you know so it's like it makes you wonder, like, how much of them is of the person is still really there in inhabiting that that body. That, that makes there be more weight to killing one yeah. of them, right? Yeah, one, exactly. one of the reanimated, like like you said earlier, he sees his neighbor and the child that his yeah. daughter used to babysit for, and yes, these are dangerous entities at this point. But he's even just like, I saw something in their eyes; they're still there, yeah. and that's yeah, the I mean, tragic thing. Yeah, and even like he tries to talk to that guy. He's like, I think his name was like, and he's like Nathan. Nathan, Nathan, yeah. I know you're there. And then it just, it wasn't, and he had to kind of take care of the situation. Nathan, please. That that's got to be heartbreaking, you know, seeing like these neighbors, these friends that that you've known, you know, because the, these are these were farmers, right? Mm-hmm. And usually that's kind of a, a close knit community, right? And, like, having to deal with that, like, I, I can't even imagine. You kind of see where everyone's coming from. Usually there's one mm-hmm. central, whether it usually be, like, a government that's breaking down or, or whoever mm-hmm. always kind of, you know, either takes advantage of or you get to see, like, a wolf in chief's clothing. Like, it bring like, apocalypses kind of bring out some, you know, maybe some ambition in some. Um, right. But in this situation... Even though, like, yes, we're all kind of fighting against the this one thing. Long story short, they they want to at a certain point they they require the family to turn whoever infected is is into the uh, the quarantine area. Right. And what that means is it's just a place where once you your disease has progressed to a certain point, I think it's like literally like eight weeks, no matter what. They yeah. send you to this area where they just throw you in a pen with everyone else that's infected around this time. They're all eating each other, or they they put them down with this like horrible like euthanization uh, right. shot. Yeah, the the doctor one, he's like, yeah, he kept saying he's like it, it's painful right up to the end, and he he kept saying like use use the rifle, man. Mm-hmm. Like he's like it's it's just gonna be less painful that way. It's more humane, right? Yeah. So you know. All of the characters are kind of uh, kind of against that, and the infected people are just like, "No, you're going to throw me in basically a meat grinder." Like, of course, right. no one's going to willingly sign up for this. Please, Dad, please, Dad, Dad, Dad. 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 it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. However, you still kind of are just like, "Yeah, I get where these cops are coming from," because it's right. like you can't exactly. just have zombies walking around biting people. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, I, I definitely got the feeling it's like. You know, the, the one more sympathetic cop was like, understand, but at, at the same time, you have to like think about the, the common welfare of everyone. Like, I, I didn't feel like those police were being malicious at all. Mm-hmm. It was they were trying to protect people. And, you know, it's a it's a thing that they're, you know, they have to do. And it puts all the families in impossible situations because then yeah. you think about the wife of the neighbors and how mm-hmm. she just kind of kept them in this room and, and everyone was kind of mad. But you put yourself in that situation you're like that's my that's my husband that's my child that's my wife mm-hmm. whatever I, you would probably do the same it, it's so easy yeah. to pass judgment mm-hmm. and then you're like oh shit mm-hmm. i'm going to put put myself in that situation i'd probably do that and worse it's about protecting the the ones you love and even if they're not there it's like you still have that that small piece of them mm-hmm. and just not wanting to let go of that 
Yeah, and especially because at the beginning kind of exposition dump, they're talking about a possibility of a vaccine or, or, you know, these other cures that they're kind of dangling. And, and you know, the audience knows as well as the characters know that it's probably all bullshit. Right. But you put yourself again in that situation and you cling on to to any type of hope. hope. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's very effective. And, And that's what sets this apart from other films and, and, and like critically i haven't seen a movie especially a, a zombie movie or a genre movie like this so 50 50 because you know people are either like the zombie people are either in or out you know you either love right. this or you hate it you know whatever however it's like people were so split on this and they're just like no this sucked it was a waste of time honestly i would not waste my time with the film and i honestly did feel when it was over that i had wasted my time or they're like this is my favorite zombie movie of all time it is my all-time favorite zombie film and it's also one of my favorite arnold schwarzenegger films because it proves that the man can act right i've never seen such a, a crazy juxtaposition as far as one film went but and i you know i i don't feel I, yeah, I feel like it's polarizing, I guess, but I, I'm not to the extreme. You know, it's not my favorite zombie movie of all time, but it's also not horseshit either. It's it's a it's a good, well, I, I'm glad it exists, but there's definitely yeah. better films out there. Right. And, and honestly, like, to me, I don't even look at it so much as a zombie movie. Mm-hmm. They, they use the frame of a zombie movie to have this, like, display of, like, grief and then like coming to an understanding i think it's also interesting to see it from both sides from both the daughter and and uh the father you know how how they're dealing with it and i think it's also kind of uh funny like this isn't the daughter abigail breslin Mm -hmm. it's not her first foray into zombie movies because she was in the the zombie land movies yeah a lot different role right (laughs) yeah for sure i I think the makeup was was really good in Mm -hmm. in this movie with her and and the other kid that like It was the changes were very subtle and then towards the end they started to become more and more dramatic and and i thought that was i I liked how they did that this This was a perfect representation of being forced to be more creative with the budgetary restraints because Mm -hmm. i think if this movie had more money to deal with i think it would have been worse because they would have just thrown in cgi zombies or something you know whatever in there but yeah. they it was all makeup it was all practical so they had to make it look good and i think the that they nailed it yeah i i, I totally agree and it's kind of one of those things where like you know these limitations breed this this creativity that that you have to to use mm-hmm. let's talk a little bit about the performances we already kind of touched on on arnold this was arnold coming off his big scandal back in 2015 so he was definitely trying to reinvent himself. This was actually the first film that he produced since Last Action Hero. So he was really trying to revive his career. And, you know, un- unfortunately, I, I think it, it it failed in that aspect and it, it succeeded. It failed because no one saw this movie. <laughs> right. You know, it, it right. May, maybe made his budget back because, um, I mean, it was like quick on, on DVD. I think it was in theaters for a, a weekend. And then they pulled yeah. it and just dumped it right on VOD. So... But I, it's a, it was a success because he did put on a nice performance. If more people saw it, I think it would have really rehabilitated his his at least a cinematic image. Right, I, I I totally agree. And like, cause you know he's usually typecast as this mm-hmm. like action guy, right? Where this is so much more of a dramatic and and nuanced you know performance. And like, you can just like see the the pain that he's going through with all of this. And like, it's just. It's very well done for him, in, in my opinion. Like, you know, like I said, you just you just see the pain and you, you see the struggle that he's going through, trying to go on with everyday life, you know, uh, deal with his his wife and uh, also his daughter, and he's just got all this stuff going on, and it's you know, it's kind of just weighing on him so heavily. Jolie Richardson, who plays his wife and the stepmom to Maggie, was was really good in this as well, and, and that was the difference, like. A lot of, you know, zombie films either have, like, jump scares or, Mm -hmm. you know, you have that, those, those crazy, like, inevitability shots where you see a big mob and and people trying to run away. It's like that ticking clock uh, aspect to it. Right. This was cool because it had, it had a lot of, they, they shot a lot of the, 
the scenes wide where it yeah, showed what people were doing in frame and then shit in the background and you never mm-hmm. knew if there was going to be something there was never like a jump scare no one ever like jumped out and said boo but even someone right. walking around in the background with this high tension because you basically have this you know at any point this feral person that could you know change and just rip your face off yeah you know they could switch at any second oh it's so good and 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 that's you know that's what henry hobson did really well as far as maintain that tension throughout because there's a there's a unease through Mm -hmm. that that he just lets go the entire time and you oh you never feel like you could relax and that that's something that's kind of hard to do even for for more experienced filmmakers yeah it it was a very tense movie in my opinion abigail breslin is a academy award at least nominated actress she is great in everything i didn't love her in this if i'm gonna be honest her role like it it was definitely uh kind of a muted performance i guess but at the same time it yeah like it it wasn't as nuanced as i I felt like it could have been like she wasn't bad in my opinion but she she could have been better. Yeah, the I, I actually thought it was a uh, Chloe Grace Morse <laughs> yeah. uh, originally, and then I saw like, oh, that's who they wanted originally. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's who I I actually thought it was at first in, mm-hmm. in the movie. And and that's what I, I think I I put that on Twitter or something too because I'm just like, yeah, uh, th- those two were so especially at that time were so interchangeable. Now they're mm-hmm. they're doing very different roles, but it yeah. felt like you know they were like those those kid actors you know uh one was in kick ass the other one was like right. little miss sunshine but there there were those like cute little girls that were like meant to say f bombs and it'd be shocking right, right. <laughs> and they they just kind of ran on the same tracks for a long time so i definitely see that comparison that confusion and they've definitely delineated their careers uh since it was just such a wooden performance yeah. and, and it was like Yes, this was like TV budget, but she gave like a TV series performance. It just didn't feel very cinematic. And I know that's so, so snobby to say. And I kind of right. threw up in my mouth a little bit saying that, but it's, ooh, you know, she, she it was not worthy of the cinema. And just, mm-hmm. it's such a douchey thing to say, but I kind of feel it like she, yeah, she had to do a lot, but you should never have Arnold Schwarzenegger act circles around you. <laughs> Right, yeah, like it, it. She definitely felt like it was like a, a CW type show. Yeah, yeah. Because, like you said, she she was kind of wooden, and and I don't know if that was, an intentional choice on her part for how she was acting. Just because, I I don't know how I I would act if I like knew this impending thing like that was gonna happen. I I feel like I'd act pretty morose as well. Mm-hmm. But like, I don't know. She didn't act as emotional as I thought you know someone in that position would would be believably yeah it's funny too because one of my one of my favorite scenes which a lot of people hated it's probably the most like berlanti-esque type scene where she goes out with her friends and she goes out with her boyfriend for like a night out and everyone's like oh why did you put this in here this just slowed the movie down blah 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 i'm like it's a slow movie anyways no she's a fucking teenager like Mm -hmm. what else is a teenager gonna do she's that's how they say goodbye you know Wait. I love you, okay? I love you too. Yeah. I liked that. And and that I think mm-hmm. she she did really well in that scene. It, it's it's more of those dramatic scenes. I mean, the scenes where she was just kind of losing her shit and I guess we'll we'll, yeah. we'll go to spoilers here. The fox scene is extremely disturbing and extremely yeah. and and, a, and it's not just like a, a horrific thing to watch because it's it's done very much off camera it's what mm-hmm. you fill in mentally that makes right. that scene so messed up yeah and, and something uh, you know I, I think one of the short fallings kind of of this movie is they kept showing that fox mm-hmm. over and over and i was like this fox is going to represent something yeah like it's gonna it's gonna mean something and then it's like, nah, that 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 fox was just launch. <laughs> I th- I think it did. I I I feel like it did. I feel like the fox kind of represented a, a trust because it was there. It was hopeless. It's just like this person is never gonna turn on me. 
and then mm-hmm. you know look what happened you know and, and that was very heartbreaking I, I liked what she did there and, and that set up my favorite just like silent image of the film of her just kind of like staring off in, in the bathtub Mm-hmm. kind of letting it all soak in and her face is just you know she's just like in a pool of her own blood or, or the fox's blood rather those type of scenes where yes some of it was a little flashy to be flashy felt a little art studenty at times yeah some of them were really good and, and that was one of them i i really liked the scenes where she was uh interacting with with arnold like when he's working on the truck mm. or when he when he shows her the flogger and like were they like yeah you know, are finding these little bits of joy uh, with the time that they have left as opposed to just, like, eating silently at the table or yeah. her crying in her room and, and Arnold kind of thoughtfully being in the, the living room just thinking about a situation. Like, seeing the, those moments of, of joy between, you know, a father and daughter I really enjoyed. And, like, you know, as, as a parent, I mean, I'm not a parent, but, like, if I were a parent, like, I think this movie would be very, very hard to watch. Would have put all my money, which isn't a lot, on the fact that I thought the brother and sister were going to be the first ones to get eaten. I was like, oh, something's going to happen with that that kid. Yeah, I, I was scared of that, too. And they're like, oh, we're going to our aunts. I was like, okay, they're safe. <laughs> probably. Probably. <laughs> Go get chewed on by the ant, probably. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I was afraid that uh, Arnold was going to end up t- turning two, but he he did not. So, yeah, th- that's full end, you know, total spoilers here. So if, if you haven't seen this film, I think it, it, at the time of, of you watching this audience, it it's streaming free on Tubi, so you could check out Maggie. But, yes, let's, let's talk about that ending scene because that's another really polarizing piece as far as uh, how people perceive this film. And it took me a second, and I rewatched the last two minutes a couple times, maybe the last four minutes, uh, like two or three times, just because I really wanted to let it sink in. It's not like it's Mm -hmm. a big thinker or anything, but I just wanted to kind of get every angle from it. And so uh, I'll tell you what I what I surmise and then see if if you agree. I I feel like he was playing possum the whole time and he was basically kind of giving himself he was giving up, right? Like he's just like, I can't live without even though I have other kids, I have a wife, uh, I'm not gonna I I can't live in this world without my daughter, especially Mm because she's the last connection that uh, he has with her with his past wife that that died. So I I think that he was completely awake in that chair and and ready to kind of succumb to to, uh, Maggie kind of turning him as well. Yeah, I I, kind of got that feeling as well. Um, It's like I definitely felt like he was because it showed him kind of like moving his fingers on on the gun. Something that struck me about like they never really said what happened to the to uh, her mom. Right. And. When I mean, definitely full spoiler mode here. Yeah. Right, right before Maggie jumps, it, it shows a uh, it shows who I assumed was her mother mm-hmm. on the same roof, looking back at her, and it it made me wonder if like that's how the mom went out too. Oh, was was, was by jumping, and not necessarily during the zombie apocalypse and that she she did that because in, in that flashback of uh, you know her and her mom, and and I, I it made me kind of wonder about that and wonder if that was like a, a connection there. Yeah, I definitely like felt like Arnold was like, yeah, I just I can't do this because like you said, it was his the last connection to his his first wife, who you know obviously um, you know when in there when they're talking about her, he still very much you know loves her after she's gone until the day I still don't know what you saw in me. Because she had everything. She was smart, beautiful, and she had those long legs. Okay, okay, Dad, thank you. It didn't seem like a, a divorce thing. It seemed like something had, had taken her away. And I and I think it ended in as as much as something this macabre is in a kind mm-hmm. of a beautiful way. Because yeah, yes, she this girl throws herself off off a building. However metaphorically she's releasing him and saying right. it's okay exactly. she's she's letting him go or she's letting go so so he can let her go exactly and that's cuz he was never going to turn her in no. euthanize her humanely or not it was never going to happen so no i don't think so either he totally gave he gave up and you know so he could still be there and live his life and, and be there for her stepmom and, and brother and sister 
that it was a beautiful moment and it was shot really well i like i like yeah. the reflection in her eyes yeah and, and i feel like that's her like finally like I, I feel like throughout the movie she hadn't fully accepted what was going to happen to mm -hmm. her like she knew it was going to happen but before it happens it, it's hard to accept and i think that was her fully accepting the, the responsibility of that and like you said releasing her her father from having to deal with this this responsibility it was a beautiful moment it kind of elevated the rest of the film for me yeah you know, i won't say I, I was lukewarm on the film up at in that point but i was just like this is good this isn't great but i felt like it it ended with a a pretty pretty impactful crescendo and i was like yeah that was well executed people poo pooed all over they're just like ah what oh, happens yeah. uh, <laughs> what do you think happened <laughs> like yeah <laughs> like he, the dad mourned probably buried her by the the daisy garden you know and moved on i mean not yeah. necessarily moved on but continued on with with his life yeah yeah you no. know and like that's the thing like I, I like kind of open-ended endings like that. I mean, it's not open-ended for, for, for Maggie, obviously, but, but, but <laughs> her for face Arnold, was open-ended by the end of that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but for Arnold, it's like he can continue living his life. And, and she, she, as the last thing she did for her father, because she loved him was, was to give him that gift. Yeah, absolutely. What this, this movie kind of answers the age old question, Zach, what does the Fox say? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't. I don't remember how that song goes. I, I, I forget the noise. It's, I know it's something ridiculous. Th this fox said, "Get this chick off me!" Ow! Right. <laughs> That's our discussion of 2015's Maggie. I have not seen anything else from from Henry Hobson or the writer John Scott Three. Not the third. Yeah. John Scott Three. So three. possibly like John Wick. It's like John Wick Three. <laughs> Yeah. Same same person wrote both. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, it's weird. What a coincidence. <laughs> uh, I would love to see more roles like this from Arnold. Yeah, I I, I would too. Like, I I think it, it's cool when actors, especially as they get older, uh, try to break away from you know the, their stereotypes and mm -hmm. and whatnot. And I like I said, I I thought his his performance was just great. Like I. I'd, I'd definitely watch another drama movie with, with Arnold. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us. Have you all seen Maggie? If Go check it out before. like Movies like this tend to disappear and yeah. get really hard to come by, and that's unfortunate. I guess who I'd recommend this film for is someone that needs a palate cleanser. I would recommend this to the staunchest of zombie genre fans because oh yeah you, you know like me I've, I've seen it all before and you know it, it's this is not that this is a little bit different it's a little fresher it yeah. is slow it's a slow burn but if you have right. the patience for it it definitely is a bit rewarding uh who would you uh, recommend I, this yeah. film for i like you said I'd, I'd recommend it to to the the zombie genre enthusiasts because i while there are still some zombie cliches in this I feel like it, it avoids a lot of them, and like you said, it is a fresh take on on that genre. Apparent, it's it's definitely going to be a hard watch. It's not quite the road, but it's close. <laughs> <laughs> not nothing's the. I, I need therapy after the road. Oh my I, god! I haven't seen that. I'll have to watch that. Don't watch the road. Don't, don't watch it. Okay. It's the best movie. I tell no one to watch. Uh, Zach, where can everyone find you? Uh, people can find me at Z4CK38 on Twitter, and you can find me on Wednesdays on the Commander Social Podcast, and you can download that wherever you download your podcasts. Perfect. And you could follow this show at The Cult of Films. You could follow me personally at John the Host. You could also listen to this in podcast form on iTunes and Spotify. Leave us, you know, shotgun shells or crispy pieces of bacon or foxes in cages because yeah. we're hungry as well. For sure. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. We yeah. will see you next time.